very lucky to travel all over the world and I find a common theme. There are animals that are not supposed to be there everywhere. So today, let's talk about the top five most invasive species in the entire world. My name's Adam, there's a pelican up there. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So this week I'm on vacation in Cuba because I wanna make a video about if you only have a week vacation a year like most of us do, can you go on a family vacation and also go herping at the same time? But that's for another day. Today, while we're here, I wanna talk about invasive species because we're finding stuff that belongs here, but I bet you find in your backyard too. So let's start off with number five. Cuban tree frogs. Now, Cuban tree frogs, I believe, are the biggest tree frog in all of North America. So obviously, if these animals are gonna be found in places that are not Cuba, places where they shouldn't be, they're gonna outcompete things, which is one of the biggest problems with invasive species. So for example, if you have an invasive species that's not supposed to be in an area, and then you don't have any natural predator for that animal, or even if you do, they are going to predate on things that shouldn't have that thing preying on them in the first place. You're throwing off the entire ecosystem and and that is the problem. So that means that they're gonna outcompete the tree frogs that actually belong in these places. That means that the food is gonna be more scarce. That means that these things will actually start to eat the native frogs in those places. Green tree frogs, for example, which are native to Florida, are going to be eaten by these animals. And I think that cats obviously are the biggest one. We're not gonna talk about those because they're not reptiles, but you find them everywhere here. There are native snakes that should be everywhere here and we're not finding them because of cats. And in parts of the Southern US, Cuban tree frogs are acting like cats in a certain way in that they're eating up all the food and then they're eating the actual animals that should be eating that food in the first place. Coming in at number four, something that should not be surprising to any of you red ear sliders. Now, there's a lot of turtle species that are invasive basically everywhere, but I'll tell you what, I've been to all corners of the globe and I've found red ear sliders every single place I've ever been. I remember being in Lumpini Park, right? This is a great park where you're looking for things like monitors. There's these Asian water monitors just freaking everywhere as if they're squirrels. A squirrel in your park, that's what these guys are in this park here. And what are they chewing on? What are they eating? Red ear sliders. So red ear sliders, obviously, they are very popular pets, especially in the Asian markets in a lot of places where you can buy them as keychains or you can buy them in small enclosures, small deli cups, basically. This isn't how you keep a red ear slider, first of all. Second of all, what happens is you get them as tiny little babies. And if you can get them up to adulthood, because they are very hardy, the females get up to 10 inches or maybe even bigger. So now you have this turtle that needs tons and tons of room, you have no space for it, and you have to do something. And most people, hurry up and they just put them in a pond near them. And because they can live in such diverse temperatures and humidity levels and water parameters, they're gonna strive basically everywhere. Something that you don't really hear about is they're gonna hybridize. So for example, I have these guys in my local pond at my local nature sanctuary where I live. And then you can see painted turtles, which are supposed to be there. And then you see these weird hybrid things. How's that? Well, because they hybridize. You can actually hybridize certain species of turtles that are very similar. So a painted turtle and a redder slider, for example, or redder slider, yellow belly slider. I mean, it just really depends on where you are. But again, you're gonna start to dilute the actual natural populations, especially when it's in nature preserves and things like that, as they are in this example, where they can't leave, they can't go anywhere. And of course, they're gonna breed like crazy. In these ponds, it's going to, they're gonna eat the fish populations, they're gonna eat the insect populations, they're gonna make it so that there is so much waste that it actually throws off the balance of the water and it can't be put back the way it's supposed to be. So all in all, red ear sliders are terrible for most environments except for the ones they're from and I find them absolutely everywhere. They really could be number one on the list, but we've got three more. Coming in at number three, if you're an Australian, you know all about it, cane toads. So cane toads were brought to Australia, I think it was 1935, somewhere around that time, just going off memory here. These animals were brought to control a crop pest. So these animals were brought to Australia, they don't belong there, so that they could eat this type of beetle. The problem is cane toads don't really climb and the beetles are this far off the ground. So they were completely ineffective. And these toads were brought, I can't remember the exact number, Matt will put it here, it's a very small number. And then now they've exploded. In less than a hundred years, these are a giant problem. These are huge toads, by the way. These are not your average tiny little toad, or even these toads that you see here that we found here in Cuba. These are much, much larger. And the problem is they're very poisonous. If your dog gets a hold of a cane toad, that's a wrap. Not only that, but they're eating everything. They're not eating the beetles they were supposed to eat. They're eating everything else. But they're also killing dog populations and dingoes and other things that shouldn't be eating these toads. And they're not equipped for the parotoid glands that are producing this type of poison from these animals. So it's our fault 
as humans that there's an invasive species in the first place. Almost all of these animals are invasive because of us. And most of the time in these examples, we've brought them places they don't belong purposely. And even if it's just a small scale or a large scale, it's still our fault. Now we're gonna get to number one, which we didn't know we were doing, but number two is something that we definitely did. Number two is probably the biggest animal on the well, definitely the biggest animal on the list. We're talking about green iguanas. Now, you guys know I have a green iguana now. His name is Doug, Doug the Thug. I love this guy, but it's not an animal that I wanted in the first place. And I think that just goes to show that people get rid of these animals. They just do. Because when you get an iguana, especially if we're talking 90s, early 2000s, you can walk into any pet store and you find an animal like this and he's looking at you and he's so cute. The problem is they get big, real big. Now, this is Doug and Doug is not even the biggest that they get. This is a male, so males do get big, but they can get much larger. We're talking five feet. Now, luckily, we don't really see that many of these guys in pet stores anymore. The production has really slowed down. We're breeding more from morphs and just regular green iguanas. You're not finding in pet stores anymore. At expos and stuff, for sure. On Craigslist and Kijiji, 100%. But I think that this is kind of going away. Now, where are they invasive to? Well, everywhere that they can survive, basically, especially in places like Florida. Now in Florida, it's interesting. These are animals that should not be there. So you find them in trees because they are arboreal lizards. And then when it gets too cold, they just fall down and you think they're dead and they're not. And then they wake up in the middle of the day. Okay. These animals are not supposed to be there in the first place. And they're going to go as far up as the climate will allow. These animals will, just, will spread as long as the climate will allow. They're also invasive in parts of Asia as well from the pet trade. And the problem is it's not one or two people getting rid of them. It's the fact that they get so big, nearly every everybody gets rid of them in certain parts of the world. And that's where you have these issues. So usually I would say if you have an invasive issue with an animal, it's not because of the pet trade. It's because of something big, right? Burmese pythons will not make the list. They're invasive in Southeast Florida. And the reason is because of a hurricane in 1992. It's not because some guy let one go here, there, and ever. It's because of a massive event where tons and tons of them got away in the first place at the same time. So it is sad that you have to if you catch these animals, you kind of have to kill them to be responsible. But at the end of the day, iguanas are amazing pets for a very few amount of people. And I recommend if you're looking for an iguana species, don't get these guys. If you live in a place where you can, get a Fiji banded iguana, they're better. There's a whole bunch of other ones you can get in the US too. But do your research and don't go out and get an iguana because you think that they're cool. They are, but they're probably not for you. And number one, something you probably didn't see coming, we're talking about blind snakes. Now blind snakes are now everywhere in the world, including in Canada, in places where you think that you wouldn't find too many species. But at the end of the day, they look like worms. They look like these. I found one here last night, dead one. But either way, these animals, we don't even really know exactly where they're from. They're still, well, we do, but there's a debate. So we think that they're part from parts of Africa and Asia, but they're found everywhere in the world. They are so tiny and they eat things like larva. So they're gonna eat things like ant larva or snail larva, things like that. And they have these tiny little faces, these tiny little eyes and these tiny little mouths, but they're in fact a snake. They have the exact snake anatomy. They have, they shed like snakes, they have scales like snakes, everything like snakes and they even produce tiny little eggs. So one of the cooler species that you find, and some people call them flower pot snakes. And the reason that you call them that is because they were brought here in flower pots. Not intentionally, but when there is export, when you're trading things, when you're trading plants, when you're selling plants from say Florida to somewhere else, you're gonna have whatever's in those plants also. So for example, I used to work at a plant wholesaler. We would find a Knolls, we would find, we found a pit viper one time, which also isn't from Florida. So when you transfer something like dirt, you're gonna find eggs and animals and things like that, that were in that greenhouse where it was from the first place or outside in a lot of cases. So you're transferring something that you don't necessarily mean to. So it's an accident. And to get away from this pesticides and things like that, and it's just really not good for the environment anyway. So is there a way to get around this? Not really. But is there a really an issue? Not really also, because they're not out competing too many things. They're providing food because some things will eat them and in terms of invasive species these are one of the ones that are more harmless not saying totally harmless but in comparison to like a cane toad for example they're definitely more harmless than those and it's one of them that maybe you didn't even think about so I want to know in the comment section below what do you think the most invasive species is what do you see the problems with that species and as always please hit the like and subscribe button really helps with the channel and if you are a patreon supporter thank you if you want to be for as little as a dollar a month, you get videos early, discounts on merch. There's videos recently that I only put on Patreon. All of that for as little as $1 a month. And that's it. 
I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'll see you in the next one.